Did you watch the 2024 Grammys? Well, I did, so you don't have to. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Give it to me now! What? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Apologies if I look disheveled. I just landed back from Tokyo a few hours ago and I'm running on no sleep, another club, bus. bus. No, no sleep, sleep another club. club. Plane. Next place. This year's Grammys were entertaining television, so let's jump right into it. Also, do you like my shirt? I am now just realizing that every single one of my videos has been mirrored, like this writing is backwards. Is that gonna be annoying? I refuse to invert this footage to see my true self. That sounds terrifying, so costume change. Also, one quick reminder that over 70% of you are still not subscribed to my channel. My 2024 goal is to get that shiny 100,000 subscribers plaque and hang it up on my wall. So if you could please go and click that subscribe button down there to make my dreams come true. Let's start with the red carpet. Our host for the red carpet is Laverne Cox in a stunning outfit in her own personal archive. As soon as the show begins, she has a false start. Just me now. We get to see Victoria Monet on the red carpet. They show the Versace sketch of the dress and the drawing is skin and bone. That is not Victoria Monet. That is Victorian paperboy Monet. We get an interview with Mark Ronson. He discusses getting Nicki Minaj on the Barbie soundtrack and how he was excited with what she was going to do with the Aqua Barbie Girl sample. All I can think about is that Charlie XCX also wrote a song using the same sample for the Barbie movie soundtrack, but it had to be scrapped because of the Nicki song. <laughs> At least we have Speed Drive. Successful songwriter, legs, hips, and body Sean Toos and Real Housewife Candy Burris is on the red carpet and gives a big announcement. Housewives. She has decided to leave the Real Housewives of Atlanta after 14 seasons. Miley arrives to the red carpet wearing an outfit made of safety pins and her hair is styled in a very 70s bouffant way. I was very lukewarm on this look when I first saw it, but then when you realize that it is Miley that is wearing it, you realize the rocker that she is, not many people can pull off a look like this. When she arrives at the photo area, she realizes that all of the paparazzi are using iPhones instead of professional DSLRs. IPhone. Imagine spending tens of thousands of dollars on styling, wardrobe, hair, makeup, nails, shoes, etc. just for people to take photos of you on an iPhone. Don't get me wrong, iPhones are great, I am filming on one right now, but there is this expectation to be blinded by flashing DSLR cameras when you are on a red carpet. And of course, the Blue Eyes meme stays relevant. Taylor Swift arrives at the red carpet in a white dress, black gloves, and matching jewelry that can only mean one thing. Taylor Swift is being cast as Cruella de Vil in the inevitable 101 Dalmatians remake. At this point in the night, Swifties all around the world were going, oh my god, reputation, Taylor's version incoming. More on that later. Lana Del Rey is on the red carpet in a very 60s inspired look. There is footage of one fan filming her on the carpet and Sabrina Carpenter thinks that the fan is filming her. It's uh. Also, something goes awry with Lana's hair and Taylor helps fix it. We then get an interview with Kylie Minogue who has already won an award for best pop dance recording for Padam Padam. I saw some discourse online saying Troy Sivan should have won this award and who is Kylie Minogue and you need to do your research. Kylie has had a five decade long career and has consistently released fantastic dance music and has been a great ally to the LGBTQ community. Before arriving to the show, Coyla Ray gave us a teaser of what she was going to wear on the red carpet. She tweeted, doing a fitting for the Grammys today, man, when I tell you this sh about to be so crazy, are we ready guys? Well, I am wearing YSL. Mm. This is archive YSL. Yes. It's giving Carly Kloss looking camp right in the eye. Koi is wearing an archival piece from YSL. What year may you be asking? You know what year? Uh, 2019. I'm sorry, this outfit is barely five years old. It's not even old enough to spell archival. Summer Walker looked amazing on the red carpet and when she saw the Shade Room reporter, she pulled the bird at them. 
Lainey Wilson is on the carpet and I find out from the reporters that she used to be a Hannah Montana impersonator. Lainey Wilson used to be a Hannah Montana impersonator. Stop it. Say what now? What? We get a glam bot of Gracie Abrams and they highlight her nepotism. But she looks so beautiful. She of course is JJ's daughter. Our fashion correspondents for the night are discussing everyone's looks and the producers are trying to confuse the heck out of them. Produced in the past. He is one of the most talented people that we saw the kilt and we're moving right on this. Oh, and we're back to us. We get an interview with Ice Spice and Laverne keeps on saying, how can I lose when I'm already chose? How are you gonna lose when you already chose? But how you gonna lose when you already chose? To the point that I think a producer in her ear tells her to explain why she keeps on saying it for the oldies watching at home. This is a lyric for one of her songs, by the way. We then get to the main show. Since we've made it this far and I had not persuaded you enough earlier, please do not forget to subscribe if you have not done so already. Our host for tonight's awards, Trevor Noah, is outside the Crypto.com arena where the awards are being held. He briefly introduces Dula Peep to the stage to perform her next single, Training Season, and Houdini. She is performing with a bunch of dancers on scaffolding. When you think of scaffolding, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Correct, workplace injuries. Dua and her dancers are not wearing any safety gear, which really would have come in handy when she bonks her head. Dua has truly become a superstar. She is this generation's most improved player since that one kiss meme. This is a completely different person. The performance gets her a standing ovation. Well deserved. Well done, mama. Trevor Noah then gives his opening monologue. He is being kind about everyone. He informs us that Meryl Streep is in the house tonight, but she is still not at her seat. And then she miraculously appears and gets a round of applause. I can't believe that Meryl Streep is here. I really can't believe it. Because I mean, you, oh, get what? He then makes a joke about not knowing what Olivia is going to rhyme bloodsucker with when she performs vampire later. Mark Zucker, of course. Bloodsucker, Mark Zucker. <laughs> he then focuses his attention on Doja Cat and makes this banger of a joke about Doja not caring about what people think. Oh really? Well, guess what? We think you're pretty great. He then makes this joke. No one got more nominations this year than SZA. She'll be performing the year's most catchy song about a double homicide. I cannot wait. Yeah, double homicide. I'm sorry. He then informs us that Taylor Swift is going to be in the house tonight, but she is not at her seat. And then once again, she miraculously appears and gets a round of applause. I say the names and they pop out. Taylor Swift, everybody. Call me a cynic, but this was planned, right? She was waiting in the shadows so that she could make a grand entrance. We already saw her on the red carpet. She was on time. Why was she not in her seat before the show started? Trevor then makes a joke about Taylor Swift getting too many camera shots of her at football games. Games. Every time someone says Taylor Swift, I'm gonna cut the cameras to someone who played football. That's what I'll do. Cut! Bam! Just like that. Oh yeah, you like that, Terry Crews? He then calls out TikTok for ripping off Universal Music Group. Shame on you! How dare you do that? That's Spotify's job. For those that do not know, Universal Music Group took all of their music off of TikTok. This includes artists like Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, Billie Eilish, and Ariana Grande. I don't know the insider information. I don't know how much TikTok is paying these record labels, but why have no other record labels made the same move? Arguably, TikTok made the careers of people like Olivia Rodrigo. Every single song on the Sour album had this viral trend attached to it. Now you're taking all of the music off of TikTok? Mariah Carey then comes out to the stage to present the award for best pop solo performance. The nominees are Flowers by Miley Cyrus, Paint the Town Red, Doja Cat, What Was I Made For, Billie Eilish, Vampire, Olivia Rodrigo, and anti-hero Taylor Swift. Miley Cyrus wins. This is her first Grammy after being in the music game for 18 years. That Miley Cyrus shirt would have looked really good on right now. Does this mean that Hannah Montana has technically won a Grammy? While accepting the award from Mariah, she tells her to stay up on this stage. This MC is gonna stand by this MC for this because this is just too iconic. Miley gives a heartwarming speech about a boy with a butterfly net making a Mariah butterfly connection, basically saying that as soon as the boy stopped trying to capture a butterfly, a butterfly came and landed on his nose. <laughs> 
Did you hear that? And flowers is Miley's butterfly. It's a metaphor. In the wise words of Countess Luann, congratulations to my favorite Miley Cyrus, Love you, darling. We then get a performance of Fast Car by Luke Combs and Tracy Chapman. This did not happen during the main show, but I'm gonna bring it up now. When Scientists and Engineers was announced as the winner for Best Rap Song, the official Grammys account tweeted that Barbie World by Nicki and Ice won. They even updated Nicki's Grammys page to say that she finally won a Grammy, but... No. Christina Aguilera and Maluma then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Musica Urbana Album. The nominees are Saturno, I can't roll my R's, Rao Alejandro, Manana Sara Benito, Carol G, and Data by Tiny. Carol G wins. We then get a performance by SZA doing Snooze and Kill Bill. It's a dumpster fire. No, literally. There's a dumpster fire. During Kill Bill, she grabs a man by the throat and lifts him up. She is so strong, those scissorations are working wonders. He then levitates up to the ceiling in Scissor We Trust. We then get a performance by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell doing What Was I Made For? Oh, don't we then get a performance of Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Endless summer vacation is defined by bathing suits. She is so unserious. During her performance, she is wearing Bob Mackie, absolutely stun. At one point, she has to hype up the crowd. Dan, why are you acting like you don't know this song? It's giving Charlie XCX in Germany. I love this song, it's big in Germany. Miley's dancing during this performance just exudes pure confidence and sense of self. And during the final chorus, Miley changes up the lyrics. Started to cry, then remembered, I just won my first Grammy! She then does a reprise at the end that is super Tina Turner vibes. Well done, mama. Trevor then reacts to the performance by making this joke. Thank you so much for reminding us that we can all buy ourselves flowers. Thank you for that. I just wish you had reminded us to also water them because now I've got a house full of dead begonias. But I still love the song. Still love the song. All right, before we move on. Before he makes an Ozempic joke and holy moly, the fact that Ozempic jokes keep on being made at these award shows is very telling. Casey Musgraves then comes out to the stage to present the award for best country album. She is standing way too far from the microphone. The nominees are Rolling Up the Welcome Mat, Kelsey Ballerini, Brothers Osborne, Brothers Osborne, Zach Bryan, Zach Bryan, Rustin in the Rain, Tyler Childers, and Bell Bottom Country, Lainey Wilson. Lainey Wilson wins. Once again, does this technically mean that Hannah Montana has won a Grammy? Lizzo then comes out to the stage to present the award for Best R&B Song. The nominees are Angel, Halle Bailey, Back to Love, Robert Glasper featuring Sir and Alex Eiley, I See You, Coco Jones, On My Well Done Mama, Victoria Monet, and Snooze, SZA. Snooze wins and SZA takes forever to come up to the stage. <laughs> Halfway through her acceptance speech, she gives Taylor a shout out. I can't believe this is happening and it feels very fake. And I'm like, hi Taylor. <laughs> we then get a performance of Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. She does not use the Mark Zucker line. Missed opportunity. Taylor is standing up supporting from the audience. I am definitely in the group of people that think that there is a feud between these two. I don't know the specifics, but ever since that deja vu royalty situation, there has been distance between them. For those that do not know, Olivia Rodrigo's song Deja Vu has a very similar sounding bridge to Taylor Swift's Cruel Summer. <laughs> Olivia even went on record to say that she was really inspired by the Bridge of Cruel Summer when making the song Deja Vu. I love Cruel Summer, it's one of my favorite songs ever. I love the, like, the yelly vocals in it, like the harmonized yells. Because of this, Olivia Rodrigo had to give up a bunch of royalties of Deja Vu to the songwriters of Cruel Summer, which included Taylor Swift. Olivia commented on the situation saying that she was caught off guard and was frustrated that people were trying to discredit her creativity. This comment, as well as the fact that Olivia had not gone to any of the Eras tour concerts, the Sabrina Carpenter friendship, the fact that Conan Gray, Olivia's bestie, but also a big Swifty, said that he had not listened to Midnight's all the way through, even though it had been out for like a month. I actually haven't, I haven't listened all the way through yet. I'm 
The fact that they took no photographs together at award shows like the 2023 VMAs, which you can go watch right here. It has not been confirmed who the song Vampire is referring to, but there is a theory that it is about Taylor Swift. The lyrics I used to think I was smart, but you made me look so naive could be referring to the whole deja vu royalty situation. The way you sold me for parts as you sunk your teeth into me could be referring to Taylor Swift bleeding her dry of her money from the royalties of deja vu. Blood sucker thing interpreting this from the perspective that Olivia could be mad at Taylor Swift this could be a way of insulting the fact that Taylor Swift has dated a lot of celebrities. If the song is about Taylor, Taylor would definitely have an inkling that it is about her. So for her to stand up and dance and sing along to the song is chess pro level mastermind strategy. Imagine singing a diss song that you wrote about someone and they are in the room and instead of them just sitting there like, they are getting up and dancing and singing along, that would confuse and gaslight the heck out of ya. It makes the song powerless and also Taylor Swift could be erasing all theories that the song could be about her. Why would she stand up and sing if the song is about her? Or maybe the song is not about her and there is no beef between them. There is discourse online saying that at the end of the performance, Olivia blows a kiss to Taylor Swift in the audience, but that has been debunked. She was blowing a kiss to her mother. Coming back from the commercial break, Trevor makes this joke. We're back at the Grammys with all the stars that weren't on Epstein's list. You two live at the Sphere in Las Vegas perform Atomic City, and then at the end of the performance, they present the award for best pop vocal album. The nominees are Chemistry, Kelly Clarkson, Endless Summer Vacation, Miley Cyrus, Guts, Olivia Rodrigo, Subtract, Ed Sheeran, and Midnight's Taylor Swift. Midnight's by Taylor Swift wins, making this her 13th Grammy Award win. Up on the stage, Taylor makes her big announcement. <gasps> it's her 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department. Not possessive. Nobody saw this coming. Everyone was expecting her to announce the release of Reputation, Taylor's version, even Duolingo, which embarrassingly posted this tweet early, trying to be ahead of the curve. This is the second time Taylor Swift has shown up to an award show wearing a very Reputation aesthetic outfit and then ending up announcing a new album. And somehow the outfit still fits the aesthetic of the new album. This outfit looks like it's referencing the bathtub scene and Look What You Made Me Do, but it was actually referencing Bejeweled. This outfit is the same color as the album of Reputation, but it is also the same color for the Tortured Poets department. Celebs in the audience seem so tired by her announcement. Can she let them breathe? Oh. <laughs> Stevie Wonder then pays tribute to Tony Bennett by singing For Once In My Life. In the middle of it, they accidentally show a card of Jimmy Buffett. Annie Lennox then pays tribute to Sinead O'Connor by singing The Best Is Yet To Come And Nothing Compares To You. At the end, she says, is this. Artists for ceasefire. John Bastis then pays tribute to Clarence Avant. He sings Ain't No Sunshine, Lean On Me, and Optimistic. He is joined by Anne Nesby, Corey Henry, and Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis. Fantasia then pays tribute to Tina Turner. She sings Proud Mary and is joined by Adam Blackstone. During the performance, she asks for a pretty lady to dance with. Dua Lipa is very much obliged. She then asks for another pretty lady to dance with and she sets her target on a lady with platinum blonde hair and a cowboy hat. Karen Huger. This is our first sighting of Beyonce tonight. Beyonce is in the building, soft launching her act two. I just know it. The camera pans away for some reason, but Beyonce does not join in with Fantasia's dancing. Instead, she is giving a Gwen Stefani slow clap. Beyonce is hiding from the cameras whenever she notices that it is filming her. What is she hiding? Trevor Noah then awards the Dr. Dre Global Impact Award to Jay-Z. During his acceptance speech, he says this. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. Think about that. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work. I understand what Jay-Z is saying. It is disrespectful to acknowledge Beyonce's talents, but in a very limited space, mainly the R&B categories. But then when it comes to the big legacy awards like Song of the Year, Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Beyonce never wins. At the same time, Jay-Z's speech is giving off the same energy as Drake, posting on social media that the Grammys mean nothing, but then still submits his music for consideration. During the commercial break, SZA performs Satin, a song from her upcoming album, Lana. No Relation. Lionel Richie 
she then comes out to the stage to present the song of the year. The nominees are A&W, Lana Del Rey, Antihero, Taylor Swift, Butterfly, John Bastiste, Dance the Night, Dua Lipa, Flowers, Miley Cyrus, Kill Bill, SZA, Vampire, Olivia Rodrigo, and What Was I Made For, Billie Eilish. What Was I Made For wins. Brandy Carlisle, and definitely not Taylor Swift, then comes out to the stage to introduce Joni Mitchell doing both sides now. This is Joni Mitchell's first performance at the Grammys. She is 80 years old. During this performance, we get pure cinema. There is a shot of Dua Lipa and Beyonce. It has so much meme potential. Travis Scott then does a performance of My Eyes, I Know, and Fiend with Playboy Cardi. We then find out that Killer Mike wins the award for best rap album and then proceeds to get arrested at the venue for misdemeanor battery. Allegedly, a security guard claims that Killer Mike pushed her to the ground while trying to get around her at the venue, Killer Mike has responded by denying the allegations. Miss. There is then a part of a show where an Israeli and Palestinian musician are playing music together. Burner Boy then performs on form, City Boys and Sitting on Top of the World with 21 Savage and Brandy. Samara Joy then comes out to the stage to present the award for Best New Artist. The nominees are Gracie Abrams, Fred Again, Ice Spice, Jelly Roll, Coco Jones, Noah Khan, Victoria Monet and the War and Treaty. Victoria Monet wins. Very happy for her, but the Grammys, not so much. They start playing that music to tell her to wrap it up. I'd like to say that that, what, that is what rings true. The music, we got the music. Let me just make a song. Meryl Streep and Mark Ronson then come out to the stage to present the award for Record of the Year. Meryl highlights the confusion between the awards for Record, Song and Album of the Year. For those that do not know, Song of the Year, Songwriting. Record of the year, everything to do with the production, vocals, just like collectively everything about the song that you like. Album of the year, album. The nominees are Worship, John Bastiste, Not Strong Enough, Boy Genius, Flowers, Miley Cyrus, What Was I Made For, Billie Eilish, On My Mama, Victoria Monet, Vampire, Olivia Rodrigo, Antihero, Taylor Swift, and Kill Bill, Scissor. Flowers wins, and while walking up to the stage, Miley compliments Olivia's dress. She ends her acceptance speech by saying this. I don't think I forgot anyone, but I might have forgotten underwear. Bye. At first I thought this was Miley just being a little bit cheeky like she always is, but on a second thought, she was actually shading someone. Billy Ray Cyrus. During her speech, Miley thanked everyone under the sun but her dad. For those that do not know, Miley's mum and dad had a very messy breakup and Miley has picked her mum's side in this. Billy Joel then does a performance of Turn the Lights Back On. Celine Dion then comes out to the stage in a surprise appearance to present the award for Album of the Year. Celine has been suffering with stiff person syndrome, so this appearance was definitely a huge surprise. The nominees are World Music Radio, John Bastiste, The Record, Boy Genius, Endless Summer Vacation, Miley Cyrus, Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard, Lana Del Rey, The Age of Pleasure, Janelle Monet, Guts, Olivia Rodrigo, Midnight's, Taylor Swift, and SOS, SZA. Midnight's wins, making Taylor Swift the only artist to win Album of the Year for times. Taylor and Jack Antonoff are so surprised, they definitely did not expect to win this award. Even Lana was shook. As she is heading up the stage, she grabs Lana's hand and takes her up to the stage with her. This was a lose-lose for Taylor because when she brought Lana up, people said that this made Lana feel uncomfortable. She had just lost the award for Album of the Year. Now she has to stand up on the stage with Taylor Swift. But then on the other hand, if Taylor did not bring Lana up on stage, people would have said, why did she not bring up Lana on stage? She was featured on the Midnight's album. She was sitting right next to Taylor the whole night. Why did she not bring her up? She is still super excited while accepting this award, so she sort of kind of ignores Celine Dion. It wasn't intentional, but it rubbed people the wrong way. This really stuck out to people considering how Miley cherished Mariah Carey during her acceptance speech earlier in the show. It's really not that deep. When Celine first came out to the stage, you can see Taylor Swift stand up and applaud. A photo of the two was then released 
release soon after the discourse hit Twitter that got someone tweeting that the Navy SEALs run her PR. Closing up the show, Billy Joel performs again doing You May Be Right. And that is the end of the 2024 Grammys. One for the history books. Thank you guys so much for watching. A quick reminder that I have a Patreon where I'm posting exclusive content. If you want to go subscribe, click the link down in my subscription. Please leave a comment down below telling me which award show I should cover next. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and heck, why not share with your friends? And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.